Off today, everybody watching us live on KUM TV 8 and streaming us on Facebook Live. I'm Jason Salas, and joining us on D18 tonight are three senatorial candidates. We have Democrats Sabina Perez and Senator Regine Visco Lee. Half a day, ladies. Hey. Half a day. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you. And congratulations on your campaigns. As well as Republican Kenjo Ada. Welcome back to the political <laughs> arena, Kenjo. Yeah, well, thank you. It's good to be back. Well, um, I uh, I'm looking forward to work for Guam again. All right, well, I've covered the three of you in various capacities over the years, and it's good to have friends here hoping to become members of the forthcoming 35th Guam legislature. So good luck to you all. We are giving you the opportunity to ask each of these wonderful Guamanians your direct questions, so make sure to get them in our Facebook live stream. That is going on right now, so make sure to jump in. But we have some introductions to do, and we will go left to right. Ken Joada, you have 30 seconds. Papa day, Guam. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ken Joada. And uh, I am number 12 on the Republican ballot. Uh, I offer myself to you as a, a unique candidate because I've actually circumferenced the globe working with uh, various foreign governments uh, in transporting over $2.5 billion in government assets. And in addition to that, I'm, uh, the people of Jordan gave me the honor of serving them in 2012, and I'm hoping to translate. Uh, everything I learned into the 35th Guam Legislature. Bless you. Thank you for watching tonight, too. All right. Thank you so much, Ken Joe. Senator. Hafede, Jason, and Hafede Guam. I'm Sidus Masi for giving me the opportunity to serve. I'm Regine Bisco Lee. I'm number 18 on the Democratic side of the ballot, and I'm humbly asking for your vote. In my first term, I was able to fight back against increasing taxes on working families, um, to give opportunities for higher paying jobs for our people and to protect our environment. But I'm not done yet, and I humbly ask for your vote for strong families and a strong Guam. All right, thank you very much. Sabina, half, half a day, day once again. Half a day. Half a day. Uh, my name is Sabina Perez, uh, Familian Gozo and Cabeza. Recently, I was a Simon Sanchez High School teacher. Uh, prior to that, I was a medical technologist and diabetes researcher. I've spent, uh, I've, I've volunteered over hundreds of hours of volunteer time as a community organizer for the past 15 years. I bring with me leadership skills that combine hard work, experience, and passion that can be used to address our island's issues and to promote sustainability. All Thank right. you. Very much. Go Sharks. Nice, nice color you wore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and invoke uh, host privilege. I'll ask the first question, and you guys get your questions in our Facebook Live queue. We will answer those as well. A variety of topics. Make sure to get those in. Um, but I'm wondering, We've had so many distinguished Guamanians seeking public office. Uh, we'll start with Kenjo. What makes you distinct? What separates you from the pack as far as why people should consider you as a senator? Um, because I, I believe that I've actually, I've got off the internet for the past two years and I have no cell phone for the past two years uh, to answer the hard questions of Guam and how can we uh, solve uh, our financial issues outside of federal, the federal dollar and actually develop our island so that the actual living, working, invested humans, uh, human organisms on Guam have things to thrive. And uh, so I believe in Guam and I know that we can do this together and we're going to put, if you guys will put together a great team. Bless uh, you guys. All right, thanks so much. And while you were away, there's this thing called Facebook and it's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Senator, you're of course seeking re-election. Mm -hmm. What separates you among your contemporaries? So prior to coming into the 34th Guam Legislature, um, I did a lot of work in local and federal government, both here on Guam and in Washington, D.C. Um, so I have a little bit of policy experience, and I also bring to the table um, some work in the business sector. So I was a small business owner. I'm a mother of two young girls, and I really use them as kind of my benchmark in, in all the things that I try to pursue. I, I try to make sure that all the things that we're focusing on will give our children and our future generations a Guam that they'll be proud to inherit. All right, very well. Thank you very much. And Sabina, you've got a very diverse background, uh, lots of skills yourself. What makes you distinct? Um, I feel that uh, I'm unique in that I have a science background. Um, with the science background, there's a framework uh, called the scientific method, mm -hmm. which I can apply to developing policies. Um, it's one that requires research and then coming up with solutions and then testing the solution to see if they, they work with the community. Also, I am connected to the community. I've been a teacher for the past nine years. I'm in touch with what our community, uh, the issues that our community face. And I've also have proven leadership uh, with the 15 years that I've uh, uh, spent in organizing our community to protect the public interest of Guam. All right, well, it's my hypothesis. Those, those were all good answers, so <laughs> well done, each of you. Okay, and now to our Facebook users. Great questions, guys. Keep them coming in. And we get started with Alan Addis and Nicholas. Alan, thanks for this question. It is a good one. Kenjo Atta, we'll start with you. 30 seconds, please. Alan asks, are you going to raise the sin tax, and are you going to raise the alcohol tax? 
Uh, I don't believe in raising taxes at all because I come from a third generation of uh, the support Guam movement, the support local movement. The first generation of my family did really well. The second generation did really well. And now you're looking at the third generation. And it's really hard out there uh, for uh, the small businesses to thrive. And that's why I offer myself uh, to this uh, 35th Guam legislature and you because uh, it, we're really hurting. And uh, this is what happens when the people take action. It looks like this. Senator Regine Bisco Lee, this is something you've dealt with in your first term. Right. How do you plan to attack uh, the syntax? So I've actually um, been against raising taxes that would affect um, local families and, and our small businesses, anything that would affect the cost of living. But syntaxes are a little bit different. Um, I oppose the alcohol syntax that we just recently voted on yesterday. But the tobacco um, syntax that we considered, um, there were a lot of very, very compelling arguments that were shared on the floor. And I just feel that as an island with 27% of our folks, you know, addicted to cigarettes and addicted to tobacco. This is something we really need to um, tackle very quickly. And there's also... Um, I'm sorry, that's your time. Okay, right? sorry about that. Okay, a good answer, though. There's so much more to say. Exactly. That, that is, <laughs> this is certainly not an easy question to tackle, but uh, Sabina, what are your thoughts on the syntax? Um, so I, I feel that as a policymaker, it's important to deter, um, you know, uh, addiction to, um, you know, nicotine. Um, so I would look. Uh, I would probably have to take a closer look at the, um, you know, the the details of the tax itself. Um, I feel it's important to deter, uh, but I also feel that if we do have a sin tax, that the money should go into helping families uh, with treatment programs, possibly prevention programs. All right. Very well. Well, good job all, and good job by you guys. We are looking at your questions. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but D18 continues right after this. Your feedback. You are here by the magic of technology. You're in the room, and we'll get to your questions when we return. beautiful, healthy smile is an expression of confidence. The more confident you are about your smile, the more likely you are to fully express your feelings without having to worry about the way your teeth look. Before cosmetic dentistry, I didn't smile as much. I didn't have the confidence, and it shows. And since I've had cosmetic dentistry done, I feel 10 times more confident. I make my initial introduction with a nice big smile and a handshake, and I just you know, feel like it really is a relationship builder, a nice warm smile, and it makes the clients and customers feel more comfortable with you feeling confident, and they feel that you're not just there for business, that you're also there kind of as a friend as well. So, I mean, it's amazing how powerful a smile can be. A good smile. <laughs> Since your smile makes a significant impression on those around you, it is important that it makes the impression you want it to make. All right, everybody, D18 tonight continues. I have been pouring through the many questions that you have. Good ones, all of them, and we start with Jesse Limtiaka, and we are going to start with Sabina Perez for the first one. Sabina, Jesse asks, what do you plan to do about home rental rates on Guam? Um, I think it's important to encourage development of affordable housing, uh, for one thing. Uh, I'm, I still need to study whether uh, we need to have a limit as far as how much rents can go up. Um, definitely, there is a pressure for affordable housing because of the inequities we see with the military population with subsidies versus the local population that doesn't have that resource. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we need to address and something I need to study a little bit more on, on how to best address that issue. All right, very true. 
Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Senator, the Airbnb issue has come up under your tenure. Um, would that be part of your plan when it comes to controlling home rental rates or, or even just addressing home rental on Guam? So I think home rental is definitely something important to look at. We want to make sure that the cost of living for all of our people is affordable, that they're able to afford homes and really have that dream of home ownership come true. And so anything, any kind of community involvement from stakeholders, but also the, what the government can do to assist people to make sure that they're able to meet that dream um, is incredible. And it's very important to be able to establish that. So I'm looking forward to continue uh, promoting policies that do that for our people. All right. Thank you very much. And Ken Joada, not everybody has the aspirations of home ownership. Some people just want to rent. Yes. What would you plan to do? Uh, make it available for them. I, I believe as long as the people of Guam are benefiting from anything that comes out of the legislature in a positive manner, we, it should be nurtured and uh, flourish, and uh, especially if it takes it straight to the home front, directly on your table and into your pocket. I, I support everything like that for Guam. Guam moving forward. Very nice. Okay, we'll go back to Sabina Perez for our next question. And this one comes from Tony Martinez. Tony, thanks a lot because this is a great one. Tony asks, Sabina, what ideas do you have to hire more law enforcement officers on Guam? Uh, so I, I feel like we need more uh, funding, uh, obviously, to support uh, additional personnel. Uh, one of the ideas that I uh, heard last night, um, it's not my uh, idea, but uh, there's a potential to, uh, you know, what if we have cameras installed at signal lights um, and, um, you know, everybody knows in Guam that the red light needs 10 more go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, if we can catch, uh, we can, you know, maybe possibly uh, incur fines on, on people who run red lights, mm -hmm. uh, we can probably amass uh, some funding for personnel. Technology Additional automation. Personnel. Very yes. nice. Okay, Senator, uh, Tony saying the same question to you. What, what plans have you to hire more law enforcement officers, specifically conservation, corrections, and police officers? Mm -hmm. And all of those things are extremely important. We want to make sure that our people feel safe in their homes and throughout our community. Um, but again, the funding issue is there. We want to make sure that we have a very strong economy and really um, be able to provide those resources to our law enforcement officers. Um, in addition to just hiring more people, we want to be able to give them the tools and the training that they need to really do a great job for our people and keep everybody safe. All right. Well, Kenjo, when you were mayor of Ada, or I'm sorry, when you were mayor of Jonya, <laughs> you are the mayor of your own home, obviously, but when you were mayor of Jonya, public safety was big for you. Yes, it was. It's a really huge issue, and it's very serious. It's as serious as a heart attack. But the, the funding that, uh, that is needed to provide the, the, the human organisms that work in that field, which, by the way, do a great job, it's not there. So Guam is actually going through a renaissance where they're actually reconsidering um, certain uh, industries on Guam uh, and that those are major funding sources that we can actually cultivate and push towards that and uh, again uh, Guam has to be bold and take that step and we can do it together Guam. All right very nice we'll go back to Sabina another great question this one comes from Terry Demian Katehe and Terry asks what ideas do you have to address the care of our senior citizens of Guam of course the adult mm -hmm. daycare center the RFP was withdrawn because of a variety of reasons. So how do you take care of our island's beloved elderly? So this is something I would like to see as far as diversify, just diversification or our tourism industry. Um, if we can recruit or attract elderly people to Guam, um, you know, potentially the dollars that come in can help leverage, we can leverage those dollars to uh, our own community, our own elderly population community. So um, that's one of the ideas that I have. A very interesting. All right, Senator. You know, there are a lot of community stakeholders out there, Jason, that are currently addressing um, some of these needs. And we do have an issue with the current contract being, um, or I guess, being done. And we really want to ensure that there's the funding there, the funding mechanism, and, and ensure that this is a priority for our people. Uh, we all also want to explore bringing new industries in and, I mean, maybe taking a look at hospice care or um, assisted living for our elderly and what that would look like on a local scale and how we could get you know a lot of our local and cultural uh, resources tied into those things. All right, supplementary services certainly needed for our beloved Monomco. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, Ken Joada, taking care of our island's beloved elderly. It's, it's our responsibility always and always. Um, uh, but I, again, I go back to how are we, how are we gonna fund that? And I believe that if we can actually corner uh, new industries and dedicate uh, you know, uh, sources to support the Manumco, specifically the Manumco. Out of those resources, I think that that's our uh, answer to it, to actually give them that money to take it home and make life better. Indeed. 
All right, thank you so much, Terry Demian Caddy, for that question. I know you were trying to get this in the last time, so see, we take care of you, and we will take <laughs> care of all of your questions when D18 Tonight continues. Our workforce is changing and our students need to be prepared for the challenges that are ahead. I graduated high school at GCC when we could learn a trade and even prepare for college. Our students deserve schools that are safe and books and resources that help prepare them for their future. A Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration will rebuild Simon Sanchez, fix our schools, integrate technology in the classroom, and expand access to trades. I'm in to help get us there and we humbly ask for your vote. I'm this message. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years, of experience. Win adventure in the ITE Explore Your World Million Mile Giveaway. Every week from July 16 to November 2nd, we're giving away 60,000 United Mileage Plus miles to ITE postpaid and prepaid subscribers. Imagine where you could go. Go on a weekend getaway to the Philippines. Enjoy fresh sushi in Japan. Eat a dakimas. Sip a latte at a cafe in Paris. Or use your miles for shopping and other rewards. It's your world. Explore it. Welcome back, everybody, watching live on KUN TV and streaming on Facebook Live once again. It's not just questions that are coming in on our Facebook Live comment stream. People are also telling me my, my tie was crooked during the commercial break, so thanks a lot for that. I do appreciate it. And we're going to start with Kenjo Atta for our next round of questions. Kenjo, this is an interesting question from Tony Martinez once again. Tony, really good question. Hello. Have you ever looked into possibly hiring grant writers? Uh, I myself am actually a grant writer. Okay. Uh, I've actually uh, done some work with the AmeriCorps, uh, the Serve Guam Commission, some of the grants. Uh, I've actually served as a commissioner on that. In addition to that, uh, when I was mayor, we were able to get the Micronesian Resource Center into Jotnia, which was like 300 some thousand uh, of economic activity for that area. But um, grant writing, uh, Guam depends a lot on grants. But what if Guam actually took a step towards not depending on that and actually providing its own revenue to, uh, to take the imagination and have fun with it? All right, there you go. Um, Senator, you manage your office. Yep. Is a grant writer a dedicated staff or dedicated to just that function? Is that something you've considered or...? Yeah, it's absolutely something that I've considered, but you know, in reviewing, and I also have experience in writing grants and doing some of those things, it's very important to take a look at the management aspect of those grants, making sure that you're providing the data back to your grantor. Um, and then also, you want to ensure that there's a sustainability mechanism. So when that grant funding runs out, you don't want to be tied to that and then kind of left holding the bag sure, uh, with yeah. a great program that you're not able to fully fund. Okay. Well, Sabina, as an educator, I'm sure you can appreciate the concept of grants, but uh, how applicable are these, you know, as a senator and someone implementing public policy? I think it's a viable option for nonprofits. I'm not sure so much for a legislator uh, because of the management issue. Okay. Um, it requires probably a full-time staff to manage that, especially for larger grants. Um, as a senator, I probably would help out organizations seek possible uh, grant uh, opportunities uh, direct them their way rather than really uh, manage it for them. Okay. All right, good answers all. That, that was a, that's not an easy question to tackle, and neither is this one that we are dealing with now. This is coming from healthcare from our friend Maria Hernandez. Maria, thank you very much for this question. Maria asks, do you feel, I'm going to start with Kenjo, do you feel it's important to introduce policies that address the alarming rate of diabetes and other chronic illnesses? Uh, per, from personal experience, uh, my mother had uh, diabetes and I actually would inject her with um, uh, her insulin throughout. It's a very serious disease and Guam is, uh, has taken it to its own, to the home front. And uh, in addition to that, I think that um, the community of the diabetes community on Guam is a very healthy community, but we as, the, as legislators need to get their, them their help maybe financially or on a global scale. All right, thank you, Senator. Of course, healthcare is always a big thing, but 
specifically within the context of diabetes, what can you do? Absolutely, and I also have members of my family who are struggling with this. Um, this is something that I think needs a lot more education and from the prevention side of things, ensuring that our, our children and our entire family um, is aware of the things that they can do to prevent diabetes from happening. And then also as a community, we need to do much more to ensure that those with the disease um, have opportunity, better opportunities for treatment and things like that. All right, very well. Um, Sabina, your question on your thoughts on this and also Angela Santos is saying, Biba Sabina. <laughs> well, um, you know, diabetes is a serious concern here on Guam. It's one of the higher, uh, we have higher rates of sure. this disease. Um, I feel a lot can be done uh, to help promote healthy lifestyles. Um, also, potentially diabetes, one of the sources of diabetes could be contaminants in our, in our environment. So um, in regarding those, those aspects, yes, we can do, uh, as a center, I will look into um, those, those areas. All right, thank you much. We are going to take another commercial break, but please stay tuned. We've got more of your questions from Facebook when we return right after this. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's, offers fully covered loading and unloading area with individual pin coated gate and door access. Call us today at 648 7867 for more information. Summer is here, and at Cars Plus and Mighty, that means big savings. During our summer clearance event, right now, save up to $8,000 on select 2018 Ram 1500 SLT Crew Cab, or save $3,250 on a 2018 Chrysler Pacifica. Voted Family Car of the Year. 1.99 APR financing is available for qualified buyers. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card, where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Don't miss our summer clearance event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Our workforce is changing and our students need to be prepared for the challenges that are ahead. I graduated high school at GCC when we could learn a trade and even prepare for college. Our students deserve schools that are safe and books and resources that help prepare them for their future. El Leon Guerrero Tenorio Administration will rebuild Simon Sanchez, fix our schools, integrate technology in the classroom, and expand access to trades. I'm in to help get us there and we humbly ask for your vote. I'm this message. Big Fries took everything from me to keep my father from exposing the truth about Nacho Fries. Rebellion is forming. Flip the switch. Is there anything that tastes better than this? Revenge. The future is Nacho Fries! Looks like you guys could use a hand. Welcome back everybody to D18 tonight. We will let our esteemed Guamanians give you their final push in just a moment, but we got one more question. This, come, this one comes from Eric Atta, and we'll start with Senator Regine Bisco lee in the center of the couch. Senator, how can you streamline government expenses, Eric asks, while stimulating economic growth other than tourism? I think one of the things that we really need to look at is information technology. You know, we're sitting in the middle of intense amount of fiber optic cables. Um, Guam is really a, a bed for that. And so I think growing our economy in terms of IT infrastructure and uh, training our people to be able to take those high paying jobs is a really great opportunity for us in, to grow our economy and, and provide more for our people. Excellent. Okay, Sabina, you mentioned tourism, of course, but a lot of people would say don't put all your eggs in one basket. In addition to that, what would you sure. propose? When it, well, going back to the streamlining, I think I, and I've talked to people who run agencies, and they feel that they can reduce possibly 20 percent of their agency if they were able to consolidate some of the functions between two agencies, uh, for instance, the accounting uh, department. Um, regarding uh, stimulating more revenue, uh, I've always been a promote. I like to promote diversification through social entrepreneurship, which combines business with addressing social needs of our community and use of renewable resources. All right, very nice. And Ken Joada, last question for you. And by the way, Tony Luhan also gives you a question. He said, when you said human organisms earlier, uh -huh. he put the laughing emoji 15 times. <laughs> hey, he really we're liked that. We're all human. We're all human. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and, and now to the question from Eric as far as sure. what can you propose about streamlining government expenses while stimulating economic growth? I think uh, areas where it's important too is to effectively spend our money. 
in uh, places where a lot of people benefit from. Uh, in addition to that, Guam is so small but yet so big and uh, we should also maybe uh, come up with great ideas like a, a residency commission where we can actually monitor and uh, find out who's contributing and who's not and maybe even get uh, foreign governments coming here with boots on the ground to uh, monitor that and help us out and effectively spend our money as a government. All right, great job all. Thank you once again and congratulations on your campaigns. We are now going to give you guys each 30 seconds to make your final push to why the people of Guam should vote for you and we'll start with Senator Regine Biscoli. All right, well, seduce masi to KOAM for the opportunity um, this evening. I'm Regine Biscoli. I'm number 18 on the Democratic side of the ballot, and I'm not done fighting for Guam's families. So I humbly ask you for your vote. For more information about me, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also on, at, online at regineforguam.com. Seduce masi and maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Sabina Paris, your thoughts? Um, yes, thank you. My name is Sabina Paris. I'm number five on the Dem Democratic ballot uh, for senator. I humbly ask for your vote this, this election. Uh, with your support, I commit to uh, achieving or uh, working towards sustainability of our island. What that means is safeguarding our cultural and uh, natural resources. It means uh, improving fiscal responsibility in our government to improve services. It also means growing our human resources so that we can have uh, diversification in our economy uh, through social entrepreneurship and also through renewable use. All right, thank you so much, and good luck to you. Thank you. And Ken Joada, you have 30 seconds, please. Uh, good evening, Guam. I'm Ken Joada, number 12 on the Republican ballot. Um, I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was hungry, and you gave me food. And I want to give back to you, and I have no other desire in my heart but to serve you in the 35th Guam legislature. Uh, thank you for watching and doing your part in uh, educating yourselves about what's happening on our island. Bless you, and I believe in all of us. I believe that the, the legislature that you're about to put together is going to be the answer to Guam's future. Thank you. Bless you, Guam. Quoting from the good book, always a, Bless. Always a good way to go. Okay, thank you so much once again, and thank you guys for watching. The After Party is up next. Chris, Sabrina, and our panel of expert analysts will gauge how each of tonight's guests did. They will go over their, they'll provide their critiques, say how they did, what they might need to work on. So make sure to check that out. That's on Facebook Live next. And make sure to stay on Facebook because each of our guests is going to actually jump in, answer the questions we didn't get to, and answer you directly. So that's coming up right now. Furniture provided by Furniture Kathy Style. Men's wardrobe by Royal Bix.